how many of you agree that parenting parenting is a challenge is a challenge do you agree i think parenting i think parenting is a big challenge in general it's a big challenge and especially in the current pandemic you know situation prevailing all around the world parenting has become a much bigger challenge how many of you are with me if you are with me please type W Y bit you W Y in the chat box. If you are with me, please type W Y in the chat box. If you think if you think parenting is a challenge, please. I would like to request you to please write. Go. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes. With you, fantastic. Rajita Prasad, Satish Kumar, Ramji. Every one of you, most of you, you are all with me. You are all with me. The child is brought into this world as a miracle. As a miracle born. Delivered into this planet, and on the day the child is there, on the day itself, the child is delivered as a golden treasure, a golden treasure as such on that day itself, itself. But thereafter, the child grows, the child grows, and the golden treasure, the the golden treasure that has been delivered into this planet, into this planet, it becomes the responsibility of the parents. To see that the golden treasure is enriched for the mom, enriched for the mom, or at least retained and certainly not destroyed, not destroyed, not wasted, not wasted. It's important, and that becomes the parent's responsibility. Look at the child; he doesn't have any control. He doesn't know anything. He is totally in your hands. He's totally, totally in your hands. In your hands, in the parent's hands. How the parent brings it up, you know, that's going to be very critical. As a responsible citizen of this country, our responsibility is if we can bring up our child in a responsible manner, that itself will be a great contribution of us to this nation, to any nation that you are living in. You agree with me? If you agree with me, please write WY in the chart box. If a child is successful, it's actually it's you are successful. If the child is failure, again we have to take the responsibility for the child's failure. You see, see, because it's we people we are bringing them up, and is it we have to do it in a responsible manner. I'm so happy that you champions, you parents decided to be in this webinar to talk about this topic, to understand and to take it forward. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Let's. Uh, Let's move forward. Thank you very much. So today, you know, we will be dealing with this topic in uh, two different, uh, you know, presentations. The first presentation will be made by my co-host and co-speaker, Mr. Mohit Arora. Mohit Arora, he is presently based out of uh, based out of Antalya, Antalya, um, Turkey, Turkey. He is in uh, he is in Turkey presently. You know, let me briefly introduce you to uh, introduce uh, Mohit Alwaji to you. Group, he's presently the group managing director of Capital Pros Group and also co-founder, co-founder of CreditQ.com. Okay, you know, he is basically from Hyderabad. Of course, he's from Hyderabad. That's how I knew him. The very first time, you know, when I, when I met him in my life is way back in 1997-98. 97, 98, I met him for the first time. So it's nearly 22, 23 years back, I met this gentleman in Hyderabad. Then he joined ITC Limited, uh, the campus placement, which is a very good placement those days, worked for ITC. Then from ITC, he moved to Rabobank Bank in India. Then he became a banker. But from Rabobank Bank, he moved out of the country. Then, you know, he went to, he went to different continents. He worked, he worked in the Middle East, he worked in the, he worked in Dubai. And then, and then, you know, yes, then, then actually he became the agri business vertical head for the Africa continent, for the entire Africa continent of Standard Chartered Bank. Standard Chartered Bank. That's a phenomenal accomplishment. And you know, he is, uh, you can see those uh, global coverage director for the US Food and Farming, Oil Gas, Director of Agriculture, contributor to Financial Times, you know, and he is widely covered. He came on TV, on Financial Times. A London School of Economics, Africa Summit, he represented, he presented, then there are several things and um, more than all these things, you know, I, I was always impressed, I'm in touch with the uh, Mohit, you know, the time, 
Then he moved to the he moved to the U.S. and from there to Brazil, and he married a Brazilian lady. And uh, when his uh, child was born, you know where the child was born? The child was born in Delhi, India. He wanted that, so he came to India. He came to India that he wanted his child to be born in India. And thereafter, he started you know sending me some photographs of his child. The very first time his child opened eyes, he captured. The very first time he touched the he touched the finger the fingers of his child he captured and the very first time the sun rays fell on the face of his child he captured and that is how that is how he has been tracking that is how he has been guiding that has been living his life with his one and only son who is named as Maximus his son's name is Maximus. And today you would be uh, learning over how how he parents Maximus. We we'll come to know about him. You know, I'm always impressed. And he shares. We we are in touch with him. And presently he lives there. And I would like to present to you this great gentleman. He's a genius. He's a financial wizard. And he's a genius. And more than all these things, he is the father of a son. He is a great parent. And he calls himself not father. He calls himself as a second mother. He tells me, sir, I'm not a father. I'm a second mother for my child, except breastfeeding. I do everything what his mother does. Everything I do, whatever his mother does. So I'm a second mother. I, I really appreciate it. And I'm so honored. And we are all so honored that he is with us. And he's going to take you through a 30, 40 minute presentation. And after that, I would be coming, I, I would be coming back to you with my own learnings, my own learnings as a parent uh, of, uh, you know, two, two sons, I would be sharing my own, my own life's learning experiences. So with your, with your, yeah, yeah I'll be coming with, with my own learnings. And now with your kind permission, I would like to stop sharing and with a big round of applause from all of you, from all of you, you can, uh, can we invite Mr. Mohit Arora to come and present to us? Thank you, thank you very much. I'm stopping the presentation here. Mohitji, welcome, welcome to the webinar. Welcome to the webinar. Thank you, thank you very much. I now the screen is yours. This could let me let me give the option for you to share. Okay, now we can Mohitji, you can share the screen with us, and you know go ahead with your presentation. Right. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Shilpa. It's a pleasure. Uh, of course, you've been a long time mentor, uh, and it's like the elder brother I never had. So thank you for those words. I think that appreciation, um, but yeah, I will take it. So thank you. Now, in the audience, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have some of my classmates. I have my senior colleagues like Devesh, who used to be the global head of coverage. He and I are a shareholder in uh, Credit Q. Uh, so I and obviously a product of what I have learned from others. It could be Priya Ranjan, it's Sanjay Das. You know, however, did I understand the value of everything? No, despite all the science and math background. So this presentation is structured around that. Let me get into it straight. So the first like few minutes, it will run on its own, uh, sort of a movie or a preview and then I will take over. Yeah, it's about 30 or 40 screens should take, I guess it should take less than 30 minutes. Uh, and, and the idea is to more have an intimate session. That is why we, we are like 25 or 30. I would encourage all the questions yeah, at the end of the presentation. And, and while the presentation is running, just keep texting if something strikes you. So questions, questions, questions. You know, uh, what makes us obviously a, a good human being is what's and why's. Yes, yeah. so I will get into the presentation and please enjoy the next few uh, next uh, few minutes and my voice will be back after like two or three minutes or so. There we, there we go.
So ladies and gentlemen, I hope I could get your attention to pick up the key messages there. So, you know, stop wasting the planet's best resource. So what is that resource? Is that, is that what we think? Is it, is, it, is it gold or money or resources or whatever? No. I think it's just the intelligence of the human being. And where does that start? That starts with a child. You know, it gives you an ability to get a smile even from your enemy. Now, when we discuss about the intelligence and the children, I think no one talks about the suffering of the parent. And even when you focus on the suffering of the parent, I feel that is not the starting point. The starting point is why nature waits for you to reproduce till you are 20 or 30. Back in time, average life spans were barely 40. So nature is giving you an opportunity to reproduce, literally reproduce. It is not produce another human being. It is rejuvenate and refresh yourself. A pregnancy is not nine months. You know, a paternity leave is not 30 days. It is an opportunity for the parent to refresh because by the time you hit your midlife, you start cracking up. So this is the whole thing. It's two-way parenting. How to benefit from your child and how to redeem your child. Because while we have made progress, seemingly progress, you know, this technology and modern education and parental neglect, it is ruining the child's intelligence. And that is what you see. So two-way parenting, redeem your child and rejuvenate yourself. So how are we going to navigate next 15 or 20 minutes? This is sort of a GPS. Let's call it 353. So three core pillars of this two-way parenting. So what, why is it two-way? Let's address it in three core ways. Once we do that, we will get to the five deficiencies. I call it root deficiencies. You know, these have been deeply analyzed. And these are root deficiencies of the modern education, so-called modern education. I think the modern education stopped after 800 AD. That's what my reading tells me. But let's call this modern education. So what are the five root deficiencies? Once we're done with that, we will get to three root level solutions which will eradicate these five root deficiencies. So getting into the first one. So three pillars of the parenting. Number one, child needs your respect more than the love. And it's anyway more useful than the love. Because respect cannot be one way street. One way respect is just suppression. If your boss or manager or spouse does not respect you, you don't like it, right? Then a helpless child, I mean, why, why does he not deserve respect? And he is more intelligent than us. He does not discriminate. Like I said, he can invoke a smile even from an enemy. A child can communicate without language. A child has a wisdom to question in a deep way that you and I will struggle. So he is superior intelligent. He is the freshest form of human being we can experience. So he deserves respect. Number two aspect of the core or the core of two ways. So what is the second way? We think we are the giver and the child is the receiver. Wrong. You have to prepare yourself to benefit in, in your wisdom and intelligence from the child. You just say, oh, I learned something from the child. That is being casual about it, if not, you know, sort of moronic. Because you have to, like when you go to a guru, or a teacher, or your own parent, you have an open mind. You don't judge. Uh, you, you do a full darshan. Darshan is what? Darshan is not looking at a daily. It is unprejudiced viewing. So I'm suggesting you have a similar unprejudiced mind where you prepare yourself to benefit from the wisdom and intelligence that a child brings, which will increase your wisdom and intelligence. So again, wisdom exchange is two way. Third aspect of two ways. Stop confusing supervision with parenting and monetary support with parenting. Parenting is two way. It is supporting intellectual and physical nourishment of the child. It is not saying, hey, you do this, hey, you do that. So three things, you know, respect, 
respect, respect is mutual. And stop confusing supervision with parenting and be prepared to be nourished by your child, be open to his intelligence. So that is why it is two way. And coming to the five root level deficiencies of so called modern education. Deficiency number one. Tell me if, if I told you, here is a product, consumer or industrial product, a car or whatever, and it takes you to run out of this product for in say four years. So the product lasts four years, but it will take me two years to produce. If I if my production time is half of the of the life of the product, then obviously something is wrong with the production system. So that is the modern education. A person lives 50 or 60 years productive. We stuff him up in the college for what? 20, 30, 40 years. People like me have bloody three degrees, three gold medals. And I stuff myself 30 years. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is, is the biggest evidence that we have shot ourselves in the foot. People talk about increasing longevity, doing some rocket science in the West Coast, in Palo Alto, uh, and rescue the whole world, make people live 200 years, but we are messing and, and killing people by half, by just this education. Yeah. Half your life goes towards education, and then what happens? There's a good chance that you lose your damn wisdom. You were born. We just saw how intelligent a child is. Look at a 30 year old person who's just freshly dropped out of a college. Look at the gold medals. Yeah? Look at the IITs, IINs, and whatever, or MITs. A 30 year person will rarely have the intelligence of a child. Where does that intelligence go? It is suppressed with fear. So the first root level deficiency, you take half the time life and you remove the wisdom. Wow. And we call it more. Second root level deficiency. There is no, even in the curricula of Switzerland or in Sweden, and I have reviewed this curricula carefully, sometimes spoken to these schools, my kid has gone to school in five continents with due respect. There is no structured parental involvement. The parent is only plained and, and, and bills are pushed on top of the parent. There is no help for the parent. Anyway, yeah, there's no, so there is no engagement for the parent to rejuvenate. The teachers just keep rubbishing the parent, now, more so in our Indian culture. So root level three problem of the modern uh, education. See, how much ever smart I am, I could be an Einstein, but if I'm a womanizer, I'm an idiot. Yeah. Which is what Einstein was. Sorry to say that, I'm being a bit aggressive. But just to illustrate the point, you may be a genius, but if you have no control over your senses, especially especially pleasure and happiness, you will hand yourself your remote control to somebody else. So point number one. Point number two, economy. We emphasize happiness. That I feel is stupidity. You have to have a balanced mind. Happiness and sad. You have to rise above happiness and fear. That is economy. You are not beholden to anything, not even happiness. So in the modern education, there is no emphasis, especially on sensual controls. You know, teenage pregnancies, drugs, uh, lack of respect to parents, a lot you can play on lack of sensual literacy. So it is science and math literacy, but there is no sensual literacy. Nobody even wants to talk about it. So point four, which is the root deficiency of modern education. Excessive focus on cognitive skills. Now what is cognitive? This is math and science. So this causes twofold damage, ladies and gentlemen. The first, anybody who is brilliant, 
thinks he is a genius. So what does he do? He rubbishes others, causes undue inferiority, and then he screws himself. When he grows, he thinks he is a genius. But we forget that when we go from a starting level employee or an entrepreneur to a big businessman, you need political skills, which means you need skills to manage others, not do the job yourself. Just because I can do the job myself, good. When I grow up, you may not have those political skills. So the sharper person actually suffers more. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a curse. Uh, and, and the cognitive emphasis on cognitive skills messes the intelligence. You are creating this false sense of security or inferiority. Root deficiency five. And this is the biggest crime. Let me underscore this. This is the biggest crime. And possibly Indians are the worst criminals because they know this. The Westerners don't know this. We know it and we still commit this crime. The best age before which child can receive all the benefit is before seven years. It's, and it's actually before three years. It starts from the gestation. When the lady gets pregnant and three years. Now, there is a second shot you get around 12 years. So why is that? This is the cognitive development. Have you ever looked at, compared a cow's baby with a human baby? The cow's baby drops soon after birth and walks. A human baby doesn't. Why? Because his brain gradually develops. His basic ability, cognition, which is ability to understand without education, develops over seven years. That is the time that you have to feed his subconscious mind. Yeah, and this has been now proven times and again in the Western research that if you neglect the child before seven years, it is causing poverty, especially in the New York area. I will recommend you some books in the end. So, <clears throat> neglect of child in the modern education, when he is best gifted to receive this education before seven years. So, what has caused, you know, some of these deficiencies are, are heartbreaking. So, what has caused these deficiencies? Who's responsible? Here we go. So, excessive business interest in the education. Yeah, privatization, possibly. But a bigger contributor is neglect by the parents and lack of empathy for the child. Even bigger, I think the biggest cause of harm or what is causing these five root deficiencies is confusing philosophy with religion. Without philosophy, ladies and gentlemen, a person is like a tree without ground, without soil, without roots. Even in international curriculum, the IB curriculum, which is the most expensive, philosophy is not taught because they don't want to go into theology. Theology touches upon religion. So we have lost, as parents, as a society, skills to separate religion, rituals, and symbology from the true meaning of these. So the true meaning of these is philosophy. I will come to this in a moment. But other three reasons, you know, we are following absolutely outdated education system, which was created for God's sake in, in, in last hundred years or so to produce clerks, soldiers and subdued population. Our kids are not going to be clerks, soldiers and subdued populations. So we need a different education system. Lack of social and governmental support for quality teachers. Yeah, teacher, everyone thinks from Dubai to London to New York, teacher is a piece of crap and he can live off just $500. Wrong. Look at countries like Singapore, Denmark, Sweden, even Netherlands. Uh, the best, the topmost people, especially in Singapore, go back as teachers. So we are here, we have here created a system where we are delegating. Father is a genius, father is making a million bucks salary, but the father is. The father's child is being raised by a teacher who lives off $300 and the father expects the child to be a genius. Is that possible? No. And lastly, shallow, you know, shallow, absolutely shallow parental affection which substitutes objects with respect and time for children. 
This is a disgrace. You know, you think I will buy an iPhone and I'm fine. So you are basically treating your child as an object. The same sensual literacy I spoke about, that is being gained against the child. So with the collection of this, I feel we have ended up with a so-called modern education which kills you by half and makes you dumb. So philosophy and religion, and what's the problem with this? Now, very often, you will struggle to get to the core of philosophy of any system. Because in Christianity, there is a whole bunch of you know, rituals and icons. Yeah, it, 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 it's the same in Shintoism, in, in, in the Japanese religion. It's the same in the traditional Japanese religion. It's the same in the traditional Chinese religion. It's the same in Hinduism. Yeah. So, so this confusion that you have with doctrine and symbology that I was saying, how do you remove that? And how do you get to the kernel, the core of, of any religious system? Only by comparing it with others. But if I have no maturity to read about Islam or Jews or Judaism, I will not discover Hinduism. So it takes, you know, it, it takes that maturity to compare. And another problem that you have in multiple religions is mythology. Oh, there is this grand figure who did something. And people get distracted with the grand figure and focus and lose the message. And the message again is tied up in metaphysical terms which no one can understand or can be interpreted in a different way. So my approach to philosophy is simple. Compare with other religions, get rid of rituals, get rid of metaphysicals, have a Newtonian approach to philosophy. Give me the principles that I can understand and there is no confusion with those principles. Period. So that is philosophy and you can, Hinduism is one of the hardest to discover, um, but more on that later. So why philosophy? I'm again re-emphasizing and repeating. No philosophy, you're trying to plant seeds in hot air. There is no soil there. You will only get rubbish. So, three root level resolutions of these problems. So we saw the three bilateral system, two-way parenting, and then the five root level problems. And then why these problems exist? So, how do we solve these problems? Eradicate, yeah, not solve. I would say, how do you eradicate these problems? So there are three strategies that I suggest. One, stop milking the wife. Stop milking the mother. She's had enough. She cooks, she cleans, she takes care, she even makes money. And in the end, if she doesn't sleep with the husband, he still complains. Fathers need to come out. That concept of the father being a supervising figure, a Jesus Christ who just provides bread out of the thin air, is outdated. Be a second mother to your child. Yeah, unless you do that, you may be a multimillionaire and the child will figure that out. The child will milk you of your money and off he goes. He has no emotional bonding with you as a father. He just sees you as an expandable resource. So unless the fathers come out and take control of the child, you will not build that proximity. And why do you need that proximity? So I have enough friends in mid forties who come to me, hey, my memory is gone. I'm like a zombie. I'm being bullshitted by everyone. I feel lazy, lethargic, I'm drinking too much. Yeah, I have money so I can purchase sex. I can go to the nightclubs. So I said, okay, tell me what gives you the greatest joy? Embrace of some lady you don't know, or a drink of alcohol, or a visit to the temple, or a hug of your spouse. Now compare all of this with the embrace you get from your child. Yeah, it tells you something. So fathers need to come out and stop, you know, hiding behind the hardware. 
if you're really hardworking and if you're really super genius, you should be like the mother who can take care of the entire Brahman, not just yourself. Second, learning, I feel, is bullshitting the child. Why? Because child needs to realize the knowledge. He needs to penetrate the knowledge. Learning tells us, oh, I memorized something. I'm a genius at test. Finished. So what I'm suggesting here is read a chapter, memorize, do whatever you have to do, both as a parent and child. But once you finish reading, think 10 minutes, contemplate, meditate, penetrate that knowledge, peel the layers of it, make it your own. Yeah, just learning is not enough. This thing doesn't exist in schools and it is causing harm. So self-realization based learning. Third, catch the kid young, obviously. So I'm saying the parent is like a farmer. You have to prepare the soil to plant a beautiful plant, yeah, to sow the seed. So the sooner you start preparing the soil, it's better. It's scientifically proven on top of it now, using you know, so much of psychoanalytical literature. Now your question will obviously be, okay, that's a nice thing to say. So how will I prepare my child? <clears throat> Especially when all this Google, Microsoft, and Apple have hijacked your kids, or you have abandoned them to them. So three things to prepare the soil. Yeah, parent being the farmer and he's preparing the soil. First is the central control. Second is a cross-disciplinary worldview. Now, why is this important? And this comes to a lot of extent from philosophy. A lot of knowledge is thrown at the child, but he has no system of, 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 of you know, slotting that knowledge. I'm getting A, B, C, D, mathematics, science, physics. He doesn't have a word view. Why is this useful in the first place? And how do I slot this knowledge? So he has no means. Without word view, you will waste the cognitive intelligence. And then the third thing is the deep reasoning. Once a child has a worldview and a sensual control, he needs to have a deep system where he can reason and use logic to see what is worthwhile and what is junk. So he should be able to discern the two. So these three things, <coughs> I feel, will prepare the ground. Worldview, sensual control, and a logic-based, multi-philosophy orientation. Maybe he should be exposed to different religions, different philosophies, so that he has that economy, not happiness. So once you have prepared the soil with these three, what do you do next? You leverage these three factors to create a home curriculum. I'm saying home curriculum, which and guarantee, you know, we can work together and create a home curriculum, which is better than anything that exists globally anywhere. So to, to create a home curriculum, which is hard, and cutting edge, but thematic. When you're talking about a river with the child, you talk about the economics, the geopolitics, the science, the math, and the beauty of the river. Yeah, the river has all of this. So it's thematic learning. And then activities with the child, it could be robotics or it could be anything, but rigorous testing. And you should test the child yourself, your standards at home. Yeah, both for intellectual development or spiritual development or science and math should be higher, I believe, than outside. And again, not to forget, emphasize assimilation of knowledge yeah, through a worldview and sense control, not just learning. So, so what is this curriculum? This is a curriculum for six months to seven years. Now, many people think, many people tell me, hey, Mohit, are you mad? I said, if I'm not mad for my kids, then who do I be mad for? Yeah. So this, it's, it's, I think it's possibly the world's, not possibly, I think it's definitely the world's best curriculum, but it is hard. Yeah? You, 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 you can't do easy things with easy stuff. So what are the components of this curriculum? We spoke about logic, philosophy, multi-religious training. 
structured travel. It's, it's really important that you stop wasting your money going to London, Paris, New York, and just looking at those monuments and not learning anything. Structured travel means you pay more for the guide than the hotel. Yeah. And from the guide, you learn the history, politics, stories, geopolitics of that place. You discuss some of this before your child, yet before you go for a trip. Sorry. So before you go over your trip, discuss about that country. Have nice stories, show your kids good pictures, and then structure, structure a trip which is more like a documentary. And your children will benefit much more than, you know, okay, I've gone to Paris and I've taken a selfie. What else would you teach your kids? Stop teaching them stories of castles. It's easier to make stories out of current geopolitics. You can make funny stories out of a lot of situations. And another critical thing that you see popping up on the screen, cultivating empathy. If, if you don't cultivate empathy, the child will always have fear. Empathy is not some stupid thing that he's going loving everyone else. A person who's selfish is always full of fear. And a person who is greedy is also full of fear. Both greed and selfishness end up as fear. The only way to overcome that is to have empathy with others. And cultivate empathy. It's not like, oh, you be good and you forget about it. Yeah, that doesn't work. So you have to cultivate. How do you cultivate empathy? I will come to that in the last few slides. And use the fear and suffering to inoculate uh, the child against fear and suffering. Don't run away from fear and suffering. Fear and suffering exist, and you can use this as a vaccine to make your kids stronger. This is actually the missing empathy, inoculation with fear and suffering are the missing vaccines for the kids. Now, <clears throat> the last one. Before you teach sciences, it's helpful, or if not critical, to teach the boundaries of the sciences. What is unknown today? So what are the big questions that we are trying to resolve as a human race? Try to communicate that to the child to inspire him. Yeah. Rather than throw periodic table and, and physics and stuff at him. So describe the boundaries of the science. Why Vedic math? Everybody's talking Vedic math. And this whole thing is confusing. So I had to read up like six books and I came up with 25 algorithms where a seven-year-old kid can do uh, six digit divisions. Here. This is the best way to elevate the confidence of the child. He is like mathematical ninja after that. Nobody can bullshit him. It will uplift the child so quickly. No memorization of tables, nothing. I did enough experiments at home teaching my little fellow multiplication before he could do addition. And it works. Because this is not the stupid gringo logical way. It is the deep Indian way. We created the numbers. There are three principles and Westerners understand only one. There is a second principle called Veniculum which is not understood even today. It doesn't need any carrying between the numbers. But more on that later. Now teach the child, don't teach him software suddenly. Teach him about how physics works, you know, how hardware coding works. There are Russian systems that you can use for the children. And then open the child's mind to the beauty and how small he is don't, with astronomy and cell biology. So he can see the moons. You can see our moon is one thing. You can see the moon of Jupiter with a simple binoclocks. And once the child understands cell biology, he can understand the ass of the elephant easily. Yeah? But we do the reverse. We start with, hey, this is the tiger. This is this, this is this. Yeah. So break it down, break the knowledge down to its elementary levels. Leveraging the philosophy and you know, building the blocks up rather than upside down. Lastly, nothing will look beautiful if it is not beautiful from inside. And what is not beautiful from inside will not look beautiful from outside. Whatever you do, even if you pee, has to be beautiful. If you eat, has to be beautiful. You wrote up your homework, has to be beautiful. How many IITs you have here who cannot be a plumber? Indian engineers cannot put a simple water pipe together. My colleague is an Indian, so I must not get carried away with due respect. It amazes me. We, 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 we have ISRO and everything, and we cannot put a simple water pipe together because of lack of that art and aesthetics. 
So this comes, and with the art and aesthetics, your eyes open, your eyes train to see. You get that certain calmness and confidence in. So you get vision and you get calmness if you are aesthetic and art oriented. Yep. Nothing, logic, philosophy, travel, um, Vedic mathematics, nothing can train your eye. You don't train your eye before seven years, you are a blind man. Yeah? You see enough Indian couples standing in Louvre, not enjoying Mona Lisa. They're just visiting with their cell phone. Why? They cannot see what they paid for because their eye is damaged. So aesthetics and art, and the way art is taught in schools is again, nonsense. Color something, sketch something. You got to teach A, B, C, D, principles of art. What is line? What is shape? What is tone? What is color? You know, you have to teach in a professional way. Anyway, so, as, so going back to the parents, <clears throat> we are now towards the end of it and I will rush. So if parents had a choice, they would start again, right? And you would become a child happily. So why don't we destroy this childlike goodness? And how do you nurture this goodness and intelligence and reverse this damage? Not to forget, you know, child is like a radio and a parent is like a listener. If the radio sounds broken, it's the listener that has missed the frequency. Nothing's wrong with the radio. So you tune in to your child and every time you're stressed, do what a child would do, you know, play. Don't run, engage, don't discriminate. Angry, forget it. Restless, take joy in simple things. Your child is still not listening to you? Ask him how he will be when he is a parent. Encourage your kids to think how they will react to situations when they are parents. And you will see their sense of responsibility grow. And in the digital age, you know. The young people have loneliness and the older people have dementia. Both are neglecting each other and suffering from diseases uh, that are caused by loneliness. So what other choice that you have? You know, you are your only, you're going to be your child's only true friend. So you need to rediscover each other and become a better human being. And fight that dementia and find that loneliness. So let the child's, you know, natural intelligence flourish and end up enlighten. I've got some personal pictures after this, and that will be the end of my conversation. So this is my son taking care of a uh, mother after the surgery in Dubai. You know, building empathy and compassion. Don't keep the child away from the hospital. Show him how the death happens. Then his heart will grow. We practice multiple religions. You can see we are partly sick. Um, Buddhist, Hindu, and of course he's baptized. He's half Catholic. And Quran too. Um, we cannot put a picture of the book with icons. So he's read Quran three times. Um, this is how my son looks. And this is structured travel. You know, Ladakh, we learned Buddhism. Um, Hercules' tomb down below, Amazon and Georgia and Ecuador and of course your rubbish London and Disney and uh, Norway. So some pictures. So this is when he's learning stuff, uh, robotics that he uses. And these are books that I create for him. I call it limits of sciences, bazaars to quarks. I created the covers myself and researched and put different chapters. The, the hardest part is if you really want to make a child understand the world today, the books don't exist. So you have to build your own. So you will see there is biology at the bottom, DNA, and then there is all the physics and the uh, subatomic particles on one side. So it's just like boundaries of science. So your kids are a joy that you've forgotten to receive. Wake up. You've got to wake up before they don't need you.
this is a gentleman this is the end of my presentation uh, ladies and gentlemen sorry I will Ooh, switch back thank now. you thank you very much oh my god that's a phenomenal presentation can you uh, uh, stop sharing so okay great thank you mohit thank you so much oh my god can we give a big round of applause to all of us unmute yourself and say great job Big job. Thank Great you. Job, oh, oh my God. What an in depth and not as absolutely rocking. What an insight, a different way of looking at the whole parenting aspect. Thank oh you. my God, that's phenomenal. Hope you enjoyed it. You liked it. You noted down the points. Right. You might have, you might be having several questions. We will definitely look at those questions. We have. I would like to take a few more minutes so that we can close the presentations and then, then we can move to the Q&A session. Right? Okay, great. Let me, thank you, thank you once again. Thank you, Mohit, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Oh, what a lovely, beautiful slides and excellent content and the way we're looking at the whole problem. You talked about three core pillars of two-way parenting. And you identified five root level deficiencies of modern education. And then you came up with three root level solutions and then three factors for home curriculum. With a beautiful child, you drawn the whole curriculum all around that. That's phenomenal. Thank you, Mohit. Thank you for you know, enriching our insight, insight and the knowledge about the whole issue of parenting. Thank you very much. As a father, as a father who brought up two of my own sons, I would like to share just three learnings from my parenting experience. Would that be okay with you? Sure. Sure, sir. John? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. We are, yes. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you. I will just take a few minutes for that and we will get into this, okay? Okay, great, great, thank you. That's my eldest son, Shaker Anand. The Shaker Anand, you know, uh, studied in small schools in Hyderabad and Bombay and then came to Hyderabad. Then, you know, I, and uh, yes, he went on to become an IITN. He did his um, uh, BTEC from IIT Guwahati and then worked for a couple of years and cracked CAT examination with 99.99 percentile and went to IIM Ahmedabad. And there again, he's among the top of IIM Ahmedabad. And then he got placement with Goldman Sachs, an American investment bank, and presently works. He works for Goldman Sachs as vice president in Bangalore. And he's married. He's married. Despite all, you know, he's, I'm a proud father of Shaker Anand. I'm a proud father for the great accomplishments that Shaker did. But I'm, I'm much more delighted to tell you that Shaker, despite all the great accomplishments, he's still grounded. He's still grounded. He's married. He's married. And uh, he's very much, you know, that love and respect that exists. And I'm so much honored that I'm blessed with such a kid. So this is the first one. I, I have another one. His younger brother, five years younger to five years younger to Shekhar. This boy's name is Suraj Ananya. Suraj Ananya, it was a very naughty kid, mischievous. Well, Shekhar was, you know, um, more academics oriented, quiet, calm, disciplined. And this boy is a very naughty, mischievous kid, highly sociable. And he's there all the time outside the home while the elder one is inside the home. You know, people who used to, you know, this boy is so popular in the colonies where we live. We were known as his parents because he's more popular there in those colonies. And, but at the same time, I was always worried, you know, how because his elder brother was performing so well at school and you know, was always seen as a champion. That pressure, that pressure of living up to the expectations, you know. I was always worried whether I'd be doing some kind of some kind of you know comparison with his brother, 
that would be putting a lot of pressure on him. So we were careful, we were careful, his mother and I were careful in handling this kid. And he went on to, he too got some IIT selection, but then he preferred computer science. So he went to Big Spilani um, to do his uh, four year BTEC program in uh, computer sciences, the subject he, he chose. Okay. And then he worked for a couple of years and then he went to University of uh, Minnesota, Minneapolis, where he completed his master's in computer sciences in uh, big data, you know, data sciences. And presently he works for a company called, um, you know, Pearson, the global learning company in, in Minneapolis. Okay. Uh, this is the, you know, my experiences of working with them, I had some failures and I had some successes with, with uh, while bringing up these, my kids. So I would like to share number one, three lessons that I learned from my kids. One thing is positive coaching versus negative coaching. My eldest son was studying at Vignan Vidyalayam Nizam Pet Hyderabad, his 10th Saturday. So I asked him, I have this habit of, you know, making my children write what you want to become, what is the goal document sort of thing, you know. He said, we sat together and said, you, you would get state first rank in 10th standard. That's the target we kept. State first rank in 10th standard. You know, that's what our goal is, our family goal and his goal is. And the quarterly exams are over. What was his performance? State first, forget about it. District first, forget about it. City first, no, not even school first. Not even school fast, looking at that performance. Oh my God, I asked him, what is this? What are you doing? Is this a way? This is how you want to become your state first. Then, you know, if this is the way, you, where do you want to do in life? Because I was born in a small village to my parents. You know, I was in a very small, remote village in Andhra Pradesh, a small village to a farmer, to a farmer. So my father used to tell me, you know, I always used to see other parents telling the children, you know, what are you doing? Huh? You know, they used to ask me whether you would mend the cattle. If you like this, you can never go to the, you would mend the cattle. So they used to tell me, oh, no, 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 I don't want to mend the cattle. So, you know, uh, you know, you would do it. So I was also using similar kind of language with my children. I was thinking that, okay, if I scare him, if I frighten him, that you would become that. If you don't study properly, if you don't get ranks, you would go like that. You know, half year exams, then final exams were over, 10th standard completed. What happened to the state first? Forget it. District first, forget about state first, forget about it. Not in the section first. He is lost in the section. When I went to Vignan Vijayalam to pay the fee for my younger son, I've seen a big banner there with all the photographs of my, my, el my elder son's friends. Their pictures and then marks there. And my son's picture. Over. Then he joined for his plus two. I asked him, what do you want to do that? Dad, I want to crack IADZ with All India rank number one. All India rank number one. Oh my God. I looked at myself. My son's failure. Is it his failure or my failure? What did I do to my son? Have I done positive coaching or negative coaching? I tried putting some pressure, telling him about negative things. So I thought something wrong drastically with me. It's not with him. He's a genius. How come he became like this? So I changed my ways. Then what I did was, you know, I said, he said, he himself wrote that. He himself wrote that. I want to crack IDC with all India rank number one and get admission to IIT. That's what he wrote as his goal. I told him, beta, you know, if you get into IIT, fine. Even if you don't get into IIT, fine. You're so good. We, we are with you. You know, I, I told him, even if you don't go to IITs, you can, you'll still become successful. You'll still become a happy man. You don't have to worry. Give your best and enjoy your classes. Go there. You get into IIT or not. That's not a thing at all. That's not a thing at all. If you go there, fine. Even if you don't go there, you'll still be successful because you have it in you. You have to, so I changed my face. I changed. I stopped telling him, you know, if you don't get this, you'll become like this from negative coaching. I started working with him and giving him positive coaching and all that. So my, my suggestion would be, you know, um, helping the children with a positive coaching that mattered, that helped me a lot. So number two thing that I want to talk about, preaching or probing. So beta, you become an IAS officer, or beta, you go to IAT, IAM, or you become that, you become this, this kind of preaching. Rather than that, I that that travel actually I never tried doing that. I, I mostly I used to follow a particular document which I made my children write. 
which made my children right. I always ask them two questions. What do you want to become in your life? What do you want to become? And write it there, put it in black and white. And then the next question is, why do you want to become? What do you want to become and why do you want and what are the five benefits? I used to have a small simple goal document. What are the five benefits you think you and your family would get by your accomplishment of that? So the question him, what do you want to become and why you want to become? I didn't tell him what he has to become and why he has to become. It is left to him. No, the world is so, you know, so open and information is available. People are getting exposed. The children, they know very well. So they know what to want to become and what they become, what they will get, what kind of life they want to lead. So I felt, you know, Asking the right questions in the right way, you know, will make them to think creatively, understand who they are, and explore themselves. So, probing, go for probing rather than preaching. And the number third and the last one, the last one that I would like to share with you is motivation or love. Motivation or love. You know, motivated. I'm a motivational speaker. I used to say, yes, you can do it. You are awesome, fantastic. You are a genius, this and that. I used to send lots of messages. But more than those motivational messages, what really worked with my child? My child is my love for him, my respect for him. My respect for him. So I didn't motivate him and inspire him a lot. All that he did when he was when he was doing his studies, I used to uh, make an omelette of his, his taste and go and feed him, or I used to cut the fruits and go and feed him, or I used to sometimes apply oil, apply oil to his head and give a good polish to him. Always, you know, I used to tell him, beta love you, and, and my children, my wife, you know, one thing for which she, she appreciates me, not many things, but this one thing that she appreciates me for is the habit of habit of uh, expressing love explicitly in our home. You know, we regularly say, love you, beta, love you, dad, love you, mom, like this, you know, or when we charge this love you comes when you, you know, this is the kind of thing that we we share so i felt you know my love simply my love made him stay focused on his goal stay focused and you know and i told him you get it fine if you don't get it, just enjoy enjoy your studies enjoy what you're doing and we love you we love you period unconditional whatever you are we love you we are with you if you get an IIT, I am fine. If you don't get it, it's fine. We are with you. We love you. And that love, unconditional love, explicit expression of love, for me, I felt it helped my children and my family to today in, in whatever way. So, so these are the three things that I wanted to share from my life's experiences. And um, yes, thank you very much. It has been an honor to have all of you here today. Such a great joy. Thank you, Mohiji. Thank you very much for the wonderful presentation. So what is next? So what's next? What's next? Next is perhaps, you know, like personal high performance coaching or curriculum design. Uh, Mohiji is there to help you. And he's also, he will share some more details about this curriculum thing with you. And thank you very much. Thank you. And he's also writing, he's also writing a book. A book and the whole thing and I uh, would like to request Mohiji to you know come on screen and take it further and otherwise we can also have some questions and answers thank you once again to all of you for joining us this evening for being with us your participant you are awesome there is a, something really special in you otherwise you would not be here in this webinar and you are the serious people who became interested who came and joined us we are so much honored there is a great parent in you there is an awesome parent in you. You are something really special. Your children are so blessed to have parents like you. God bless you. Love you all. Thank you very much. And I would like to request uh, Mohitji to come forward. In the meantime, if you have some questions, you can ask the questions and also you can put it in the chat box or you can even unmute yourself and ask the questions. Thank you very much. You are awesome. Thank you. So, uh Ladies and gentlemen, please feel free to shoot. Um, you can either type or ask, unmute yourself and ask. Thank you, Rahman Ji. Right? Thanks a lot, sir, and all the organizers and presenters. Thank you, Rahman Ji. Thank you for being here. Just, you know, just for the forum, uh, uh, for the audience uh, here, uh, like Dr. Sivu Prasad said, uh, we um, we are working on a book, yeah, but that can take some time, and we are open to you know one-on-one -on -one consulting with a focus on two fold things. The first is the parent himself needs a lot of help in terms of 
emotional support in terms of figuring out the right and wrong. Yeah. But there are no schools for parents. Yeah. So our, if we are successful, and I'm saying this, of course, um, with a lot of uncertainty and things, like in anything, the ideal state for us would be to set up a school for the parents themselves so that parents can be made, uh, they, they get the right support, they can be made aware. Like me as a parent, I cannot get much information from my mother. She gives me stuff, she is great, and an enthusiastic Punjabi lady, but she gives me stuff which is irrelevant. Yeah. Uh, she has read Gita uh, uh, three times, and she's read Guru Granth Sahib, which is the uh, Sikh book, but I get um, and, and, and I get connotation which is very old. Uh, plus the sciences, mathematics, robotics, all this have moved so rapidly. The fundamental sciences have shifted so much, you may not even have an idea. The, so uh, the parents need help. Um, so the idea is um, over nine years, you know, whatever experiments I have done as, a, as an experimental father, I'm happy to share. Uh, with the parents, yeah. and the end product of these conversations could be to have the parents create a curriculum which they can teach on the weekends, they can mix in their travel. So this is like a curriculum which is not very obvious, but is there. Uh, there's a way to deliver it and what curriculum, how you deliver, um, you know, all of this depends so much on, 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 on the psychological situation. What is the parent thinking? What state of mind he is? What kind of a child it is? So while there could be some journal guidelines that I've shared, uh, having, having spoken to a lot of my friends and some of the friends I keep constantly in touch with, I believe every situation is unique and, the, and it needs careful attention. Now, one thing I will say, no child, I feel, is stupid. If our heart and liver and kidney is the same, why is our brain different? It is not different. It is just how it gets sculpted. So regardless of how your child is uh, behaving, I would say he's a genius. You just need to support him. So those are the three things. You know, happy to uh, have one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, this whole exercise actually came out of that. I was speaking to a lot, many people, and sometimes, you know, five hours, six hours, even 10 hours a week, just go into uh, talking to friends and family about a parenting approach. I thought I was saying obvious things, and people started to get attracted. And then I realized, no, 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 I'm not saying obvious things. Um, there is something of value there that I can broad base. So I'm happy to broad base. Yeah, the book, whenever it comes out, I think it will take its own time. So, back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, dear Mohit. Awesome. Um, can we have some insights? We have, you know, learned people here, um, psychologists and professor. Adi Raju Sachinarena, sir, is there, sir. Um, few insights from you as well on parenting. And yes. Oh. Yeah, I think somebody is trying to get online. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, Anusha, your screen is shared. Can you uh, please stop sharing, Anusha? Yes, okay. Anusha Bhakti, please, can you stop sharing the screen? Your screen is out too. Okay, let me just see here if I can stop it. Yes, okay, great, I can stop it. Great. Thank you. Sir, yes. Um, yes, then we have um, our in charge. This is Sita Garu, Sita Garu. <laughs> yes, Namaskar Vandi, please. Chattara Biramana, Rudumatalu, please. Would you like to share your Dr. Sita? Sita. Um, Dr. Sita is a, a dentist and is a, is a lion, is a lion, she's a lion and does a lot of service um, and a great parent you are and a great grandparent you are, <laughs> please, uh, from your side. 
మేము ఇంతకు ముందు పిల్లల్ని ఎక్కువగా కోపడుతూ కసులుతూ ఉంటాము ఇవాళ ఆయన వల్ల తెలిసింది ఏంటంటే వీ హావ్ టు రెస్పెక్ట్ అవర్ గ్రాండ్ కిడ్స్ ఆల్సో అది చాలా అద్భుతంగా ఉంది ఇలాంటి ఇవి కనీసం నెలకు ఒక జూమ్ మీటింగ్ మాకు ఇస్తే మేము ఎందుకంటే ఇది కరోనా మనకు చాలా హెల్ప్ చేసింది ఏ విధంగా అంటే కరోనా ఎందుకు హెల్ప్ చేసింది అంటే జూమ్ అయితే అందరం అటెండ్ అవుతున్నాం అదే మీటింగ్ ఎక్కడో పెట్టారనుకోండి కొద్ది మంది మాత్రమే అటెండ్ అవుతాము అందుకని వీలైతే వన్స్ ఇన్ ఏ మంత్ లేకపోతే త్రీ మంత్స్ ఒక్కసారి అయినా మా మా బ్రెయిన్స్ కొంచెం కదిలించాలి children. respect you so she says from today she would be respecting her grandchildren you know not only love is respect you said you know respect is mutual as a parent we have to respect our children so that's one point that she is taking home and she is suggesting that this kind of things things you know like do meetings once in a month or three months if we can have it you know she it will be very refreshing that's what she said right thank you okay right thank you thank you sita garu thank you dr vijay kumari sir uh, sir i want to share something please please uh, sir actually it is really very interesting and uh, informative uh, topic sir uh, we, matlab thank you very much for uh, your dynamic organization of all these uh, uh, presentations and uh, sir one thing i want to share sometimes sir we see our children they are much more talented much more creative compared to the parents sir i keep appreciating this from my child also yeah. i feel surprised sometimes from where she has inherited at the creativity sometimes say you must have inherited from your father and this is from me they are much more brighter sir than we have really we have to appreciate day to on day to day basis and they feel uh, flourish they will be happy to listen this from the parents and and very jubilant also so this this encouraging we have to do every time on on every day day to day basis what i feel and more, one one more thing sir it is not like ki uh, the present age generation is earlier we used to listen to the parents here this time we have to listen to the kids yeah we have to respect their views wow. we have to go according to their views also sometimes it is yeah. not like uh, you should follow we are your elders we are seniors you have to say uh, we'll be uh, all our sayings it is not like that sir many times we will be learning from our children sure sure absolutely thank you thank you so much for joining us from nagpur dr vijay kumar is a scientist is a phd in agriculture she is a great scientist and the mother of a daughter and thank you very much for sharing your insights thank you thank you very much yes hello this is raju yes uh, please, please go ahead yeah, i just want to i am known mohit for uh, several years the uh, uh, decades is my good friend so uh, i i have a uh, uh, conversation con- conversations with him uh, once in a while on parenting and it really helped uh, raising my daughter she is pretty young 3 years old but conversations on vedic math and uh, um, how to and basically uh learning from his experience and implementing uh uh the strategy uh um uh, with my kids so i'm testing all the shit that he and but yeah um so uh, especially uh, on i'm trying to inculcate her a learning based on vedic math and also a practical learning stuff based on curriculum and books you now and uh, i'll see how it goes it's been pretty good so far so um thanks to mohit for sharing his experience uh, as a friend with me uh oh, thanks raju some of those conversation help me orient and learn how to communicate <laughs> so thank you rajveer thank you for joining from fairmount fairmount how do you, how do you call it fairmount united states which state is that hey, it's uh, san francisco bay area fremont of oh, fremont fremont san francisco bay area. thank you very much for joining us it's such an honor Sanjay Das ji is there 
where I left. Okay. Uh, Rajita Prasad from Bangalore, a keen parent. Would you like to share something? Uh, Ramachandran Garu or anybody? Dr. San, Dr. Sanjay Das is there. So thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. Mohitji, that was an awesome um, you know, information that you shared. I regret uh, that I have lost quite a lot of time because my son is already 19 years old now. Had these lessons been given to me a little earlier in life, maybe there would have been much more difference in the way we brought up my son. And uh, definitely, I would recommend many more friends of mine who still have, you know, my own classmates have uh, a lot younger kids than mine. So, yes, I'm going to recommend this because there are so many things that I have learned today from, you, from this session from both of you gentlemen. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Rajita. Mother of Vishwam, one of the kids I admired a lot. Oh my God, you know, Vishwam, Vishwam, yes. So, uh, so nice. Sir, if I can react. Sorry, please, I didn't mean to interrupt. Please, please, sorry. Uh, that was Rajita Prasad. Right? Yes. Yeah. Rajita, how old is the kid? My son is 19, sir. My son is 19. One nine. Right, right. Yeah. No, then that is the right age uh, for him to be trained for sensual literacy. Anyway. Yes. 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 <laughs> you know, the, so, uh, that, that's yeah. the takeaway of mine today because generally we respect his views and thoughts and whatever he wants, he takes his decisions. Now I have understood the importance of being a parent and giving him more literacy towards sensuality and sensual life. Thank you so much. That is my takeaway today from this session. Now, and here is a simple answer if I can give you. There are two, there are two books. One, I'm writing it down. Yeah, please. One, of course, one, of course, is Gita. Yeah. It's called, I may be misspelling it. It's called Satipatana Sutra. Sati Patana Sutra. I put it on text. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, if, if you repeatedly, this is like Newtonian Hinduism. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not, it will not talk to you about Hanuman, Lakshmi Ji, or Ganesh Ji with due respect. It is, it is Newtonian. It's very hard to understand, but if you read three or four times, you will get it. It is like, you know, reading Einstein or Newton. It's exactly that. Um, uh, so this would be, you know, a great tool if I may offer quickly. Uh, of course, I don't know your situation, um, uh, but this, you know, this is one of the. Uh, this, this forms this book forms the basis of the mindfulness sessions at Google. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's, it's a it's a phen phenomenal. Book. Uh, yeah. It's taken me four reading. I think it's, I'm on my fourth reading, and I have understood a little bit. But uh, yeah, please. I'll leave it with you. The book, uh, name of the book is in the text. Sure, sir. I have noted it down. I'll definitely look for where I can get the book. Thank you so much for guiding me further. Now, if, if you struggle to find the book, send me a message. I will give you the PDF. Okay. Thank you. Super. Because my son most of the time loves to go through PDF books and I'm sitting in front of books and reading them. Given this period of Corona, he's totally, totally into period reading. But still, first, let me try and get the book in hand. If I'm not able to, I will definitely message you, sir. Thank you so much. No. Yeah, printed book is great because printed book, I think, is a symbol of yeah. what you don't know. Even That's if right. you keep it on your table, it keeps provoking you. So, <laughs> so get a printed book if you can. Yeah, uh, sure. Otherwise, I will arrange. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other questions or any other? Yeah. Any other? Like to ask any questions or make any statements? If, if there was anything wrong I said, you know, I'm happy to learn. Um, that's it. So please, if you think there was anything contentious or inappropriate or something that annoyed or irritated you, please, you know, 
that please say it, and it, it will help others who I speak to in future. No, no sir, I, it, it is in international standards. The presentation is excellent. Guruji, Guruji, Adiraju, sir, pranam, pranam. Thank you, sir. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Thank you so much. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Pranam. Thank you, Sir Prasad Garu. Thank you, Mohit sir, for such a wonderful presentation. And uh, I would try to follow all these things as I have got two little kids, eight years old daughter and six years old son. I would try to implement. And uh, I would oh. like to raise one question from my end, sir, so that I could get some help. Please. Uh, as uh, like we try to observe our children and maybe at one point of time after you know uh, exhibiting patience maybe at one point of time maybe we go with that you know take it for granted and we go with that reaction so our intention is not that but uh, you know unknowingly we might react with the intention of correcting our children so is there anything where you know you can help me where even though if children are extreme, you know, go ahead with without reaction. So if I understood your question, you're saying even though it is not your intention, you get provoked to react negatively. Means right? I get reacted if children are, you know, guided for several times, but still they are repeating the same. Right. same mistake. Yeah. See, tell me what will improve your health? your mental well-being, your blood pressure, BP, diabetes, whatever it is, general health, what will improve your health? Patience. Yeah, yeah. Because with anger, you burn yourself. Every time you see your heart is shrinking. Now, it is easy to say that. How do you practice patience? You practice patience first and foremost with your enemy. Person who dis who you don't like, you hate, you want to kill him, you can't do anything. So better use him to practice patience with your enemy. Right? So I think same thing. Now a child is out of control. So in one way is to think, okay, I lost patience, I'm burning my heart. You say, no, 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 no. The more impatient this little fellow is, this little monkey is the more he is helping me become patient. More patient you are, stronger your heart, liver, kidney, spleen will be. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, you know, my children, you know, are helping me in other way to become stronger and, you know, <laughs> that's nice. That's so insightful. Exactly. Thank you, Mohit, sir. Thank you, Shiva Prasad Garu, for this uh, very useful program for me and for all of us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. But if your kids are eight and six, please do not lose a second. Catch them. Their mind is still under formation. Yeah. So yeah. Yes. You will. Yeah. They will benefit so much. But you know, just with the respect, you will see their behavior will change. Okay. So you are blessed and good luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Sivu Prasad Garu, any, uh, I'm not sure if anyone's... Rajita Prasad ji is asking, is the author of the book that you mentioned, um, S.N. Goyanka? Satina, that book you mentioned, right? Sattipatna, yes. Sitta, Sitta Patna Sutra, right? Uh, he, she's inquiring if, it, if the author is S.N. Goyanka. Um, there are different authors, so be careful. If, if you pick up a Hindu author, you will get Hindu version of it. If you pick up a Westerner, you will get the Gora version of it. It's <laughs> uh? <laughs> the best author book in my case. Because when I just try to Google for the book, when I just try to Google for the book's name, uh, it just yes. showed me S.N. Goenka's book, which was originally published in 1998. Right, I can see that is one of the books. Uh -huh. um, the one I read is written by a Sri Lankan monk, Thero something. 
but yes i think please feel free just pick up anything you can get okay. uh, to start with okay and just be mindful of the background of the author of course okay so that that's the reason why i was uh, trying to you know, check now itself so that you can give me a clear insight about which book would be best to give in right see if you can purchase anything printed in sri lanka or thailand or uh, yeah laos cambodia some of those places or us and uh, i'm looking for it okay uh, but i cannot find uh, yeah i don't have the book right away with me mm-hmm. um, yeah. yeah so i think to start with anything is okay i would say okay so if you can just pass the information to uh, shri prasad sir also would be a lot of help you know uh, at least for so, like we can go with uh, goenka's book which is readily available in the market but probably you know later on once he uh, is getting interested in uh, going studying the book right yeah so the book i have is from uh, i got the book from the monk himself in in the monastery in uh, dubai of all the places oh wow okay yeah because i'm i'm reading 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 three or four years pass you read uh, so many religions and i met this um, monk and i say look this is all very confusing give me something which is more scientific and not all these stories and all that. i said i don't want mythology i don't want any symbology just give me something which is just the core of it okay uh, because i am originally financier so i get tired of bullshit faster i don't know <laughs> <laughs> so he gave me this monk book i am going to whatsapp um uh, sir prasad garu the cover of the book this okay. book exists i think in physical form okay online i can see there are many books yeah okay. no i want the physical form first sir yeah, sure so just after the call i will uh, send the i will send the cover and the back maybe you can email this sri lankan monastery and they can send you the books so sure. done sir thank you thank you so much my pleasure thank you thank you so much that's really beautiful presentation with such a you know such an insight i know it has come because of years of years of your own search you will search into the whole you know whole aspect of uh, bring up a child uh, uh, really appreciated that mohit thank you so much for sharing with us such a beautiful insight and um, there are lots of people are appreciating the chat box you may kindly take a look at it okay right any other questions or um would you like to say something choudhary sir would you like to say something abhinav gyani would you like to say something or ask a question we have two three students actually they are not parents but they are like of course the future parents and if they could be in this session out of their interest there is one girl by name anusha and there is a um, gentleman by name abhinav gyani and there is also i think one more um, maybe uh, one more student but definitely these students are here would you like to ask any questions uh, yes sir uh, good evening sir first of all mohit sir uh, yes yes sir uh, sir uh, like you told about uh, siddha patma sutra uh, that uh, gita book uh, i was searching for it sir but i did not find it right i was searching for it only uh, no uh, information is coming out sir like i am also interested yes, on the chat there is a link okay sir okay sir i will just see yeah. did not see. if you go just follow this wikipedia link it will give you at least you know this is in the book original book is in pali yes sir uh but english many english translations exist because of that sakti i think it is sakti patna uh, sutra but it comes up as sutta in pali yes sir dhammapad and uh, further sutra it gets bifurcated and trifurcated uh, sir one thing that i would like to share about that respect thing that you talked about and there i got the reflection of my parent only that uh, my uh, relation with my parent has been like that ki uh, i remember since class 8 and 9 uh, when i got uh, some senses that what to do and what not to do they were 
always there for me and at the same time they were respecting my uh, whatever decision i was taking but still they were asking for a logical interpretation that why are you choosing this and if uh, they got a, a good answer from my side they'll be like they'll be pushing me ki okay okay very good you should go for it and if not then i'll i'll try to convince them so it was a mutual relation sir so i i got that thing from your presentation i got that reflection also so uh, for that thank you very much sir like uh, i was on a uh, on a, a great path i get i guess great you not you know this is how unfortunately in hindi we don't have a word which equates to tahzeeb what is tahzeeb in hindi so tahzeeb is only goes from the parent to the child if your parents treated you respectfully you will treat others respectfully and you know this like we say in hyderabad in lucknow these places have this tahzeeb so yes, this sir. is the heart of it and i think all this distraction with social media and short tempered nature and you know quick stimulation seeking is just destroying this respect so glad you noticed it and hope you will repay your parents debt to your children yes sir sure sir i'll try to implement it hope so in coming future thank you very much sir i'll go through that gita thing because i find that very much interesting like a uh, newtonian concept related with the, the mythological uh, in, interpretation so i'll go with go through it sir thank you very much there is no mythology there is no mythology it is total kick ass philosophy pardon my language you may not have the stomach to read it you may puke because it is so hard uh, uh, but sir on uh, give okay sir i'll say one thing like my father is a, a professor of philosophy only so i have got into touch me uh, with uh, many books related to that that is why i got attracted with that thing so uh, that is why sir thank you no, no, no. then you are blessed you should leverage that resource go hug him 10 times and uh, once you master philosophy it will i didn't even know what philosophy is you know um, i had to just discover after all the mistakes because i wanted to understand what makes a good human being good human being is not science and math it is not this emotional skills bullshit which the westerners do good human being is a foundation you see it in indians but you can't grasp it where the heck does this foundation come from so that is philosophical orientation um, uh, my father sir yeah. says that the philosophy is your experience it piles up piles up piles up and you get to something that is called as philosophy so in one word he defines it as experience if you are having a good experience yeah. or bad experience does not matter it is a philosophy in itself whether it is a spinoz or socrates all gained from experiences only so uh, that is what yeah. i have learned and i'll get to that book sir thank you very much thank you thank you very much thank you thank you abhinav thank you sir thank you so nice so enriching so thought provoking so thought provoking thank you very much that's so we are all definitely going back um, thinking you know uh, that we have to be respecting of course you know we always think in our philosophy that you res- you respect elders you respect teachers you respect your seniors you know but here is a message respect is mutual okay and um, in fact if we start respecting our youngsters and our children and the respect they would start respecting you automatically and they would develop they would inculcate the habit of respecting if you don't being told so you can actually set an example by respecting them in the first place and i am going back with that message from you again like our uh, sita uh, dr sita said i am also going back with the message of respect them more than what i have been doing it all along thank you very much any um, like chaudhary sahab gayatri ji raman ji those sanjay ji from kathmandu would you like to say something satish kumar ji ganesh shinai sahab ganesh shinai sahab writes that you know this came this program came to me at the right time i don't know why he said that but then um, yes um, yeah sri sri great thank you once again if there are no questions or uh, no um, uh, ganesh is going to say something ganesh ji please go ahead okay <clears throat> uh, 
I have two young kids. Okay. They are late in our life. So there is a gap in our understanding as to how we manage them. Because we lose patience over a period of time. But then as I was having these challenges and we were discussing these in the morning and yesterday also, this invite popped up. So I told my kids also that we are going to have a meeting at 7 o'clock. You have to remind us. So 6.55, my son comes and says, you have a meeting. I said, fine, very good. But then, you know, these challenges which I was encountering in the morning, I reacted instead of responding. Okay. And then I also learned that there is something which I need to change. You know, the son also is undergoing certain changes, you know, physiologically, mentally, emotionally. They are going through so many challenges. But they have not been accustomed to staying at home for the last six months. They don't get to go out. They don't get to see the light. They don't get to play. So when there are so many things happening within him, yes. it is pertinent that I also understand. And today's session, there is a reason why I told you it came at the right time is because it gave us, you know, that deep insight, which I said from your learning and experience. And thanks to, you know, Mr. Mohit Arora and Dr. Shiva Prasad for sharing it with us because it comes at a price. But we have paid the price earlier, you know, for having not learnt it. So now what we can do is while we cannot do the damage, undo the damage which has happened, we can be more careful in appreciating what is there with us. As you rightly said, this is a precious gift from nature to us. And then if we can manage that gift in the right sense, instead of pushing our thoughts, no, our expectations and what we want them to become that is not there because we have always given them the free hand but then there is you know that nature to know that there is something beyond what they have they are already doing that they should pursue if you are pushing that also it is wrong so leave them the choice give them love and respect exactly what you said it came as a hard you know hitting bold out of the blue to me that yes, there is something which I need to do, unlearn, you know, leave the baggage and take up from your insights. Thank you so much, Mr. Mohitji. Thank you so much. Though, you know, you, you uh, were saying that probably you are using certain words, but I think it is necessary because, you know, for us, sometimes when we are asleep, <laughs> if I may use the word, you know, to shake them and, you know, Wake us up so that uh, our children can be better, do better, and uh, hopefully they'll do better also. Thank you so much. Have a nice evening. Uh, Dinesh Garo, can I say if you're from Hyderabad? Sorry, I didn't. Yes, yes. I basically hail, hail from Karnataka, but uh, more of Hyderabadi. So when you were saying I have a tehzeeb, uh, you know, I had hair raising experience because after many years, somebody is responding to that because we have lost that culture. You know, very few people understand it, respect it. And, and when you said that it used to be experienced, you are missing that. And you rightly refer to Lucknow also where it is used. You know, very few people appreciate that thing in life, what you can pass on. Because that respect which comes is very rarely seen these days. I don't know. I don't want to call it a you know, uh, loss of values culture. But then, yes. Uh, we need to have that. It's a very, very important thing which you rightly mentioned. Thank you so much for you know, mentioning it. Well, Hope I'm not taking your time and dominating the discussion here. No, no, Ganesh Karo, this is, if, you know, you are raising a point which I didn't get time enough to cover and, and okay. let me address that. So, you know, on one side you have imposing parents. Do this, do this, do this. Right? On the other side, you have this, what I call extreme loving and caring parents. Yes. You are you have dominate. So parents think the real choice is dominant or extreme love, care, affection, monetary support. I've tried both. Yeah. But sometimes so, we lose control of ourselves. Yes, that is a question we uh, looked at. So here is what I would say. I think it is not fair to leave the child alone to himself. Okay. For instance, if I take you to a Japanese restaurant, hmm. 
in the middle of new york, new york or london and say ganesh garu i give you this big menu and say ganesh garu i am happy for you you also be happy pick a dish i will pray i got it right yeah. that's what you are doing to your child so what a parent will do i believe the middle path you know we are in india is middle path we are not <laughs> isa or mohammed we are middle path yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what is the middle path the middle path is don't impose but don't leave free draw up the whole picture in front of him mm. only if you draw a lot of dots the intelligence is just formed by connection of these dots yes yes You're so right. draw as many dots as you can in a nice polite way no need to be excessively um, kind also sometimes you have to poke yeah yeah uh, don't dominate i think domination causes more hurt than excessive love yeah. but so more and more dots you can draw for the child Uh, and let him uh, he will wake up himself he will yes. self realize you without you imposing yeah yeah uh, that twice yeah that used to be the way in south mm, mm. i feel sorry please you were saying something no mm, no i'm saying if if we can you are rightly saying that you know we just show what is possible and then you give the freedom of choice to him and then he start connecting one by one one by one one by one in his own way instead of yeah. me trying to show him the path and i am able to fully relate to you your you know that example of connecting me to a uh, taking me to a japanese restaurant because the other day when i was trying to read a book in sanskrit i was finding it difficult to read at a particular you know sentence and suddenly you know i see myself talking to me and then he's saying you know today morning you were pointing a finger at your son that he was not able to pick up something today i'm talking to you you are not able to read some script what do i tell you the inner voice is telling me you know then i realized what you exactly said that you know there are so many challenges we need to appreciate what they are respect them for what they are yeah yeah please continue now and slowly sculpt mm. with mm. these dots you know mm. in a discreet way you want your son to go some way but mm. don't tell him that yes. because then he will revolt so instead you connect the dots and position one against another like a hidden salesman then the truth he will realize because he realized the truth it is his truth it is not your imposed truth absolutely right even with a small child i see this psychology works yeah you yeah. debate logically you show different things then keep quiet he will pick up what you want easier without fighting and anything recently somebody you know gave this word of uh, you know uh, guidance people don't like to be told mm. you know even various ages they don't like to be told but if you show them the path mm. and if they realize it for themselves as you rightly said just guide them create that you know scene there mm. and enable them to experience it and learn from there i think that's a better way of doing it rather than you know telling them because the moment you say telling it they see that it is coming from me yeah. there will it will be the absolute truth but the moment yeah. they don't like it being told yeah there is resistance again yeah so if i say krishna said this thing arjun ah. said this thing he say who is krishna who is arjun i don't care yeah the, now if i say logically it makes sense they listen ah. Ah. there is another thing uh, ganesh karu i feel people who are left kids if you can protect them from distractions hmm. like too much happiness too much pleasure ah. they have the brain these uh, uh, this google apple microsoft they are screwing our kids brains so if you protect them uh, without education without parental intervention i feel they have that smartness but yes. just this technology this this uh, pressure is too much so their natural intelligence is not rising yeah 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 you have to protect them like a small tree you planted so yeah. the natural intelligence take care of itself correct but if they get addicted to pleasure hmm. or happiness then finished 
Thank you, Mohit ji. Thank you, Ganesh ji. Thank you so much. But one important point Ganesh ji brought out is, if you want to change your child, let the change begin from you. You change whatever the change you want to see in your child. Let the change. change. That is the best way to change. Krish Kumar, do you like to say something? Hello, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Mohit sir and Siva sir. uh uh i am a single person and uh, not not married uh but uh, i am doing some social work on under developed child like 4 to 5 years or 10 years below 10 years myself on not like uh, government funding like that that's why i joined this uh, big minar because i learned so many thing on this may to help uh, to how to train uh, a small child like uh, under uh, developed in village uh, rural village because i am from bihar uh, from some pol district now i am doing my own self and uh, through this web minar uh, i oh god disconnected sadish kumar ji got disconnected <clears throat> we have one amazing participant here anusha anusha she is a student actually she had part, she belonged to our um, uh, professor jay shankar telangana state agriculture university you know she, i am so happy that she registered for this yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir because uh, I, i have done my ug from bsc agriculture after uh, then uh, i have done agri business management from manage oh. and uh, sanjay dar is my senior oh Yeah, he is also joined, and uh, that's why I got some mail and some information, and I joined. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And I learned so many things. So Today. nice, so nice, so nice. So I was. Thank you so much, uh, Sadish Kumar ji. So nice to see you. You are doing great service. Keep it up. God bless you and uh, support you. Bless you with all the support that you need in moving forward with your mission of helping the people. thank you so much now i would like to make a special mention here about anusha anusha says i have decided that i won't allow my children to live and grow like me so that i need some guidance and grow my future once more effectively and actually my image is so nice at this stage she is so much interested she explicitly express here thank you anusha god bless you wish you all the best and here we have on uh, pitamaha like senior our very very senior and our um, guru ji choudhary sir one or two things from you yes sir good evening sir good evening sir namaskar uh, now i am uh, grandfather actually i am not father in <laughs> my children are already grown up they are uh, married and have their own children my daughter is in canada toronto my son is in uh, perth west australia so they have ch- children one each my grandson in canada is about uh, 12 years old my granddaughter in uh, australia is about 5 uh, years now she is entering into 6th year as i said uh, below 7 years uh, whatever principles you have given certainly they will apply i have actually passed on this uh, webinar to them also mm-hmm. they must be participating there so i uh, really it is a highly uh, informative and inspiring for the children most of the parents they don't mind always uh, these things but as you said this modern education most of the time it is uh, just bookish knowledge and even curriculum also either you see cbse or state syllabuses different states so they are entirely different in one way we can say that state syllabus is more uh, in this direction rather than the cbse cbse is more just uh, pumping in more and more uh, subjects and all these things as our speaker mohit shah arora ji he mentioned so what i feel is uh, it is the responsibility of the parents more that two way learning the two way participation or parenting whatever you are saying that is a highly in, uh, rather, uh, that is a core uh, need of the hour what we can say and uh, i am really grateful to you both of you uh, for this webinar uh, giving an opportunity to me thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you sir your presence itself is a blessing for us and for all of us here you yeah, know yeah, certainly it is very inspiring love your energy your enthusiasm you want to participate at this stage you want to learn yeah yeah you 
want to <clears throat> participate that itself hats off to you sir thank you thank you very much sir thank you thank you very much your presence is a blessing for us thank you very much i have also sent my compliments to you you can see later after the webinar is over thank, thank you. you sir thank you so much sanjay das ji we need to hear from you and then anusha if you would like to say something you are most welcome to talk uh, sanjay ji please actually when my son was there because unfortunately i have lost him two years back he was a very good friend of mine oh, okay. because one part i was very liberal to him whenever he whatever i was talking to him he was listening all the thing whatever i he was talking to me and whatever he was also demanding and i was fulfilling all his demand and the other way his uh, his mother was very strict on teaching and other things if some quarrel or something and he was liking and actually managing like a bonding between wife and husband if some quarrel happening then he came and he actually so well he was just explaining why you are quarreling and all these things he explained everything but unfortunately i lost him two years back sanjay if i can speak um, recently we caught up it's a heartbreaking story you know the father whose son doesn't exist anymore and he went through some very personal difficult times so yeah but if you reflect upon sanjay's suffering then you see the value that you have in your kids hi he was a very cooperative na if something whatever i was to give was listening very well if something was happening or his mother was telling something to him he called the mother is talking like this how what i what i will do tell me but i need these things can you give me and i think for a while if i will not give then he will be actually feel that i am i am asking something to my father he is not giving me so what i will do what i whatever demanded he has made his demand i have fulfilled all his demands and he was loving me like anything because when he, he born actually i was staying outside because his wife was a doctor she was staying in bhubaneswar i was throughout my life stayed in outside bhubaneswar initially i was thinking when i will come whether he will call me father or some uncle has come he will call hmm. initially i was thinking like that but slowly he has made a very good relationship and every day he was like to talk to with me talking with me and he was speaking with him and he was missing me every time after the whatsapp video call he used to call me every day lovely thank you sanjay ji thank you for being with us today it's such a joy seeing you but take good care take good care we're all with you you know take good care please Anusha, would you like to uh, Mohit? Would you like to say something? Uh, Baki, Anusha, and Anusha is the same, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, exactly. Uh, no, it's it's a it's a boy, right? Anusha or the girl? Sorry, I'm confused. The girl, yes. Uh, is she still there? She she is still there. Now oh, one second. Yes, Anusha is still there. Anusha, would you like to ask anything or say something? Please feel free, Anusha. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Go ahead. Sir, nothing to say, sir. But uh, I'm very happy to listen this session, sir. Lovely, so nice. This two hours, I have I learned so much, sir, about parenting styles, how to treat our children. Yes. Thank you, sir. You are a great child. Your parents are blessed. Thanks I for making that comment. You will be you will be setting up everything right for your parents. Usually, parents are the people who should be doing children. As a child, you have enough strength and capability. Are so blessed. Your parents, you know, will feel proud of you. God bless you, Anusha. Thank you for your participation here today. Uh, so she has learned what not to do. Yes. Yeah, yes, sir. That is a great thing, Anusha. That that's a great realization. And uh, see, even in my case, my mother used to shout and yell all the time. Uh, she still does. 
but earlier I used to get irritated or run away or feel fearful. Then I started to think, oh, this is a very powerful weapon, so I should use it carefully, but first master the weapon. So, <laughs> and, and I made a promise to myself, I will not shout and yell. So do the opposite of your parents. Yes. Because as the parents grow older, they become your child. Yes, yeah, sir. So, I yeah, yeah it, it's, it's, I didn't want to say that in the two way parenting that once you are old, you are the child, not the parent. You know? <laughs> so, yes. so, be kind, be compassionate. Uh, of course, don't take their negative things, but uh, I would say maintain proximity. You can be their anchor. Yes, sir. You can be their life anchor and help them uh, live, uh, live another 15, 20, 30 years better. Okay, sir, sure. 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 She will, she's capable. The very fact that she's here today speaks volumes. Great. And we have Sri. Would you like to say Sri and Gayatri? I think, and Raman, P. Raman. Please, if you would like to say something. Otherwise, thank you all. You are wonderful part. You are so nice. You are still here at 9 o'clock. You know, started at 7. Hope you found this of value to you. And Mohiji, would you like to put your number or something there? You know, if somebody wants to, your mail ID or your um, WhatsApp number there. So if somebody would like to, you know, um, yes, get in touch with you. They can get in touch with you. Again, definitely we can come back with some more valuable insights maybe in the next session sometime down the line. Uh, it's so nice. You're all special. Those who are here till 15, they're all, you're all special. There's something special in you. You're awesome. You're a great parent. Our great would be parent and great grandparent and a great child as well. You're a great child. Thank you so much. Yes. So yeah. thank you so much for the session. Uh, in fact, I had to drop off. I could get back before you guys said bye and good day for today. Okay. Thank you so much for the session. Thank and uh, I also sent a message. I don't know if Sir could see that, Mr. Mohit. Um, generally, in sessions, we get insights. I don't deny that at all. But then to your session, I really want to give a standing ovation because you have given a personal feel and a personal touch to it, yes. which actually gives a lot of, you know, um, yes. what do I say? It, it gives yes. me happiness because I also have understood how further I can take my son in his life by supporting him and giving him better care than what is already being given to him. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. So much. Thank you, Mohit, sir. Wonderful compliment. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. My email is in the Thank text. You, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, sir. I'd like to request all of you, please take necessary care, excess necessary care in this pandemic situation. Stay strong, stay fit, stay healthy. Take good care of yourself and your families. Let's be in touch. You are awesome. You are awesome. You are special. You are a great parent and a great person. Great person. It's such an honor to have all of you here this evening. Thank you so much. Love yes, to all. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Go ahead and give oh, a standing ovation from my side too. Thank you. Take care. You gave us a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Dr. Vijay Kumari, thank you for being with us today, this evening. Sanjay Dasji from Kathmandu, thank you for joining. God bless you. Take care. Take good care. Shanae Ji, Satish Kumar Ji, Abhinav, Ramachandran Ji, Sitama, Sitama, Namaskaram. Thank you so much for being today. So, Sri, Sri, are you there? Sri, would you like to say something? Please say, Gayatri, have yes, sir. would you like yes. to say something, Gayatri, before we close? Yes, uh, thank you very much for offering this uh, wonderful session. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, shall we have, a, personally, shall I talk something uh, with, and I have some uh, suggestions need to take. Uh, how can I contact, could you please share that uh, 
information so that i can contact yeah 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 in, in the chat box the email id is given um, uh, mohit arora ji's email id is given otherwise also we'll be glad to share with you definitely his contact yes. number and email id i'll share with you anyone who would be needing that you know you may kindly message me we'll be glad to share uh, you are awesome you are awesome you are a great parent guy three i know take good care god bless you, you all thank Love you very much all you are awesome thank you for being with us mohit ji final word from you Oh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Silver Sir. Now I'm new to this whole thing. You encouraged me, and I think you've been a constant source of uh, encouragement and motivation. And thank you, thank you very much. God bless you all. Take care. Take good care. We'll be in touch. Remember, you. you are awesome. Remember, you are awesome. You are a great parent and a great child as well. Take good care. God bless you. So, with your permission, can we end the meeting now? Difficult to leave you all, but can we end the See meeting you. now? See you, sir. We will say goodbye to everyone and good night. Goodbye, love you all. Goodbye. Thanks, sir. Good, good night, Mohit. Bye. Uh, Bye. Good night. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. You God. kept us glued to the monitor, sir, all the time. It is so much interesting. So much interesting. <laughs> So we were even uh, unable to leave the screen. Also, we it is really informative, sir. We're Great on. organization. We're and uh, thank you very much, sir. Mohit sir, also, and you also, sir. We are honored. Thank you, Mr. Prince. God bless. You. Take care. Take good care, please. Thank you. Bye bye. Good night. Good job. Bye bye. Good night. Mohiji, good night. Take care. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you.